Americans to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of America. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny K. This is the We the People of Rhode Island Free Speech TV show. We are at 156 Gansett Ave, a business called Mission Nutrition. I have in my hand right here a very nutritional shake that is very delicious, that has no junk in it. It's all good stuff. Um, this is our first taping of our fourth season. As you can see, we have our uh, new mobile setup going on right here, a new banner provided by uh, AA sign, AA sign. Our, uh, we the people of Rhode Island Free Speech TV web show, our mission is to inform, educate, and entertain. Um, we have several speakers here today that are going to inform and educate you. Um, again, um, we are at 156 Gansett Ave, Mission Nutrition. Uh, the owners of this business, uh, Mike and Andrew uh, Philippi, uh, they opened in, uh, in August 2010. And since they've been in business, uh, they can honestly claim that 500 pounds has been lost by their... Uh, the people that come here looking for a better food alternative. Uh, Andrew Philippi from uh, Mission Nutrition. He is going to tell you the do's and don'ts of what you put in your body, what you should put in your body, what you shouldn't put in your body, um, the ingredients of their product. And uh, he's got a great, he's got a great museum piece, which I'll tease you guys with. He's going to bring up and show everybody on uh, what not to put in your body. And it has a lot to do with what people are doing today, going, you know, ever get your kids a, a kid's meal, the nice little toy? Um, you might not want to do that after this show. Be Anyway, Andrew Philippi from Mission Nutrition. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you very much to We the People of Rhode Island, uh, to John Kay for uh, that great introduction. I really appreciate that. Uh, here at Mission Nutrition, 156 Gansett Avenue in beautiful Cranston, Rhode Island, whereas we keep saying the streets are actually plowed. Um, we have been here for about five months. Uh, like John Kay said, we've had a lot of uh, success with weight loss. But what we do is we offer people good nutrition. Um, from the time we were in middle school, everybody's been told that you should always have good nutrition. You should always be eating well. And then we're bombarded with Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's and Wendy's and all the rest of these people that are trying to put not so good stuff in their bodies to the extent that this right here was purchased on August 2nd, 2010. It's what, it's five, six months old. Flies don't land on it. Uh, mold doesn't grow on it. Chemicals. Straight chemicals. Bread's almost styrofoam. You can actually make it out of, of paper mache. You might get better, better nutrients. So what we have there is an example of the amount of chemicals that the average American is putting in their body. Uh, some statistics say as much as 15 gallons per year of chemicals straight from fast food. So here at Mission Nutrition, what we do is we offer an alternative to fast food with good, nutritious, healthy meal replacement shakes. Uh, we have 37 different flavors, everything from cherry bombs to Twix bars to Butterfingers. Um, we also have a, a, a steamed green tea that helps you burn 100 calories when you drink it. It's the metabolic equivalent of 20 minutes of aerobics. So if you really want to watch that football game on Sunday... You can do aerobics at the same time by dragging on one of the tees. Um, thank you so much for coming. We're all going to hear about some great nutrition information from more of a standpoint of where it comes from. Um, the American Medical Association published a report saying that even if, even if the, thing, the things that were growing in our fields were able to give us the amount of, infra, uh, of nutrition that we were supposed to get, we couldn't get that now because of 
the depleted fields and a lot of the GMOs and genetically modified organisms that we're now putting in our body along with the chemicals like we just saw. So thank you very much. Come on down and enjoy the show. Next, I would like to bring up the entertainment factor of We the People of Rhode Island. I would like to uh, introduce my child, Chelsea Calcagney, and uh, she is going to sing God Bless America for everybody. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, through the prairies, through the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Hi, my name is Chelsea, and um, uh, I have my mom, my sister Michaela, and um, my my friends Holly and Sophie, and their dad Rod. <laughs> and um, I would like to thank my family for supporting me and um, and helping me um, find the lyrics and um, just just really um, su- just really supporting me and. Um, Oh, and um, uh, the I'm actually singing with the chorus group at Willard Elementary School in Attleboro, um, at the Providence Bruins game. So, yeah. Okay, people, Johnny K back. That was Chelsea Kelcagney with God Bless America. I know I got goosebumps listening to her. Let's give a big round, one more applause, round of applause for Chelsea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great job, Chels. She worked hard on that. She's going to be the next YouTube phenomena right now. Welcome to another exciting episode of Are You Unemployed? Here's your host, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Hello, jobless Americans. The unemployment figures have been released. So it's time to see if you're officially unemployed. Let's meet our contestants. Contestant number one, you were recently laid off. Have you found a new job? No way. No one's hiring right now. I haven't even bothered to look. I'm sorry. You are not in the labor market and therefore are not officially unemployed. Contestant number two, it says here you lost your job as an auto worker. Have you found a new one? No, not yet. The industry isn't doing so well. I need a job, but I stopped looking because the plant's closed down. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not working, but you are not officially unemployed either. Contestant number three, you were an airline pilot until a recent downsizing. Have you found work? Uh, While I'm still looking for a real job, all I could get was four hours a week at the home center. Oh, no. That four hours counts as employed. Contestant number four, you lost your job as a stockbroker. Have you found another? No, I haven't yet. But I did look in the classifieds last week. Congratulations, contestant number four. You get to be counted in the official unemployment rate. But what about the other contestants? They're jobless. Why don't they count? Well, if we included them, that would make the number much worse. But we can't go around including millions more jobless Americans. It could start a panic and we'd be totally screwed. This program has been canceled due to the recession. Moving on with the show. We are going to go right into our guest speakers, and I would like to introduce to everybody Sue Burge. Hi, everybody. Um, I love to read, and I'm going to be sharing what I've learned from some of the books that I have over here, and I urge you to either find these books yourselves and read them, 
or find equivalents because the information is out there. We don't have to be getting sick. We don't have to be on pharmaceuticals. We don't have to be fat. None of this is necessary. There are solutions to all these problems, including cancer, arthritis, heart disease. It's all there. Um, I read this book recently. It was kind of disturbing, but I do recommend it. It's by Professor R.J. Rummel. It's called Death by Government. And it's basically a catalog of democides in the 20th century. A democide is when the government kills its own people. And it turns out that four times as many people have been killed by their own governments in the 20th century than have died in all the civil wars and international wars that occurred in the 20th century, which is a pretty disturbing statistic. After reading this, it occurred to me that With the chemtrails, they're spraying all these things in the air. We're not sure what those are. Uh, Fluoride, which is a neurotoxin that they put in the water. This genetically modified food that is not what we need nutritionally to maintain health. It occurred to me that maybe our government, instead of just lining people up and shooting them the way they have in so many other countries around the world, maybe our government has devised other ways to reduce the population here in America. Maybe they can't do what they've done in other countries for two reasons. One, we have a tradition here of individual sovereignty. We are not subjects in America. We are citizens. The second reason is that we are probably the most heavily armed civilian population not involved in a civil war anywhere on earth. Those two things make it very difficult for government to just exterminate people. Here, they do it slowly. And I think genetically modified foods is probably part of that equation. I urge everybody to get a hold of this documentary. It's called The World According to Monsanto. Somebody already mentioned Monsanto here today. Monsanto is a company that is really pushing these genetically modified organisms. They're very dangerous. They don't have the nutritional value that we need. An excellent book, Seeds of Destruction. This is all about these genetically modified seeds, how they came into being, why they're being used. Um, A lot of our foreign aid budget in America goes to force these genetically modified seeds down the throats of people in third world countries. And then the countries get to a point where they can't feed themselves And then they are thrown into the arms of the IMF and the World Bank, and they have to borrow money in order to feed their populations. Seeds of Destruction. Excellent, excellent book. I want to hold this one up. This is a really cool book. I haven't finished it yet. I'm almost done. But it's called The Food Pharmacy. And it's all about the foods that you can buy that will prevent you from getting these long-term diseases in the first place. If you eat right and you get your rest you're going to be fine. This book tells you what foods you need to eat to avoid cancer. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale. If you eat these foods on a regular basis, the odds are very good that you're never going to get cancer. There are. This book goes in alphabetical order. It gives you all the different foods. You can look up carrots. You can look up spinach. You can look up whatever vegetable you're interested in, and it'll tell you exactly what the health benefits are. There are even some recipes in here on how to use those vegetables to enhance your health. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Um, One of the things I want to say about nutrition in general, um, they're adding all kinds of things to the food. They're also taking things out of the food that we need. When God created this magnificent universe and this beautiful earth, he gave us everything we need to maintain our health and our well-being. We suffer today from lack of knowledge. We don't know what those things are that we need, and so we depend on experts, and we depend on the FDA, and we depend on our doctor to tell us what we should be doing. We need to investigate these things for ourselves, not because these people are necessarily evil, but because they don't know either. And particularly when it comes to government, the FDA is there to protect the pharmaceutical companies from you. The SEC is there to protect Wall Street from you. These agencies in Washington 
really are not looking out for your best interests. One of the reasons there are all these chronic illnesses in America today is because we are not getting the nutrition we need from food. Too much of our food supply is compromised, too much of it has preservatives and additives, and too much of it is genetically modified. If you eat good, nutritious foods, a couple things happen. One is you don't get sick, you don't get long-term chronic illnesses that, that the medical profession tells you you're going to have to be on pharmaceuticals for the rest of your life because of this, and you don't have to eat as much. That was, a, that was a very exciting thing I discovered when I started going to the farmer's market in Pawtucket, which I urge everybody to go to. They're open every Saturday and every Wednesday evening. You can get fresh, organic, straight from the far, farm foods, straight from the farmers themselves. They're, they're selling you their produce. And I made a comment to one of the farmers that sometimes I just take a small butternut squash and I eat that for dinner. And I'm full. I can't eat another thing. And he explained to me that the reason is that has nutritional value. So after you eat it, you're not hungry. This is one of the reasons I think we have a problem with people being overweight in this country, because you eat foods that are nutritionally deficient, and your body's saying, no, I'm still hungry, I want more, because we're not getting the nutrition we need. So I urge everybody, please, go to your local farmer's markets when those are in season, Go to the Pawtucket Farmer's Market during the winter months. Buy your produce there. It might be a little bit more expensive, but you're going to save a ton of money on medical bills, and you're not going to have to eat as much of it for your body to be satisfied. I have some of these left if anybody wants them. This is a um, non-GMO shopping guide you can take with you to the supermarket so you try to the best of your ability to avoid these genetically modified foods and get good healthy foods for yourselves and your family. The only other one thing I want to mention about nutrition, it's very important for us to eat foods that are in season. You know, God made the world so that there are certain foods you should be eating in the summer and there are other foods that, you know, are harvested in the fall and then there are winter vegetables. Your body will be much healthier if you eat fruits and vegetables in season. There's a reason why there are seasons and the, the foods, you know, come to harvest at different points during the year. And if you're in sync with that natural cycle, you're going to maintain your health a lot better. So please do your homework, do your research, learn about these things, and you won't ever have to have a chronic illness, and you're going to save yourself a ton on medical bills. Hi, folks. Johnny K. back. We're, we're back with you. That was Sue Bird. Thank you so much, Sue. That was very informative. That's see, that's what we're talking about: inform, educate, entertain. We've covered. So Sue brought up some great points. Uh, Andrew was up here with the hamburger a few minutes ago. That he failed to mention that was a McDonald's cheeseburger that has been sitting on the shelf for since August, since the opening of this great establishment. And in that time, it's hasn't grown any mold. It, he says uh, no flies ever go around it. Um, it's just as edible now as it was back then. It needs to be heated up a little bit, but ugh, that's disgusting. Uh, anyway, uh, next uh, speaker is going to be Joe Procassini. Oh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Joe Procassini, and uh, I've been doing a lot of research on genetically modified foods and nutrition in general uh, for a few years now. And I for, want to start off by saying that I agree with everything that Andrew and uh, Sue said. So if you haven't listened to their speeches yet, uh, listen to them. I don't want to repeat anything that they've said because I have additional information that I want to add. So uh, what I what I want to I, I want to focus mainly on genetically modified organisms. Uh, and one thing I want to say is that if you look at the research that's been done on this by people who are not being you know paid off to to say certain things in order to get the product sold and people who were doing honest and uh, thorough studies you'll, you'll find that there tend to be three different uh, uh, three different motives that people think that uh, the company that the Monsanto has for uh, producing these kinds of foods uh, one of them is what Sue Birch said that uh, they're they're creating these toxic foods because they want to reduce the population 
Another one is it's just financial and that they're doing it to make the crops resistant to pesticides and they also want to patent the seeds that they that they create so they can get paid a royalty every time. And then the third view is a combination of the two. And uh, that's, that's the one that I believe. Uh, but I encourage everybody to do as much research as possible on genetically modified organisms because the more you know, the better off you are. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I want to say that definitely you should uh, avoid them uh, whenever you can. Uh, and unfortunately, there are no laws in this country that require food manufacturers to indicate whether or not uh, an ingredient or a food is genetically modified. So if you buy something to eat uh, at the supermarket or wherever and they don't specify whether anything's genetically modified, you have to assume that there's a very high probability that something in it is. Uh, and uh, b before, I get in, before I get into what you should avoid, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, I just want to adjust this. I want to talk a little more about um, why genetic modification is, is um, at the very least controversial and different than cross-pollination. Some people think uh, genetic modification is good uh, because you're making a better vegetable, you're making a better fruit, uh, by, because they'll say, well, you can, you, know, you, can take, you can take a gene from a piece of bacteria and then put it into the DNA of a vegetable and it'll become uh, resistant to pesticides or it'll become resistant to cold and you can make it a better vegetable. And they'll say, well, we've done that in the past with fruits and vegetables. We've cross-pollinated and we've been able to make uh, better fruits and better vegetables because of that. But that's different because cross-pollination, uh, first of all, that's dealing with the same species. You're not doing it with different species and you're not doing it in a laboratory where you're actually injecting a piece of DNA into, uh, into another DNA. You're, do, you're doing it naturally. It's just the way it's being planted. And also, a lot of this stuff is, is done in secrecy. I mean, they, uh, there were people who were getting very sick in the 1980s from, um, from a, uh, a uh, supplement called uh, L-tryptophan. And nobody knew that who they, when they were consuming it, that it was because they were using genetically modified ingredients. Well, to make a long story short, they, uh, there were some studies done, and they showed that people were getting sick because the supplement came from genetically modified organisms. And a lot of the stuff uh, that, you know, they're not telling the public about, and that should raise a lot of suspicion. So um, I think it, it's safe to say that whenever something is genetically modified, you're better off not having it because there are a lot of unintended consequences. Uh, the four most common types of foods that are genetically modified are corn, soy, canola, and cottonseed. So if you're at the store and you're purchasing any of those, be on the lookout for any label that says non-GMO or organic. Because if it says organic or non-GMO, then they're not allowed to use genetically modified organisms. If they don't specify, then more than likely they are GMO. So again, those are four that you should avoid having unless the label explicitly states that they're that they're uh, non-GMO, or uh, if you're going to a local farmer's market, talk to the, you know, talk to the owner and find out if they're, if they're planting their seeds uh, organically. Um, yeah, there's a lot to know about GMOs. Uh, one website that I would recommend people go to is uh, seedsofdeception.com. Again, that's uh, seedsofdeception.com. There's a lot of great information there on GMO, a lot of products you can purchase. Those, uh, those shopping guides that Sue Bird showed you, you can purchase there for a very low cost. Uh, and there's other materials there you can purchase as well. So, um, so just, um, you know, you know, try to try to make yourself as informed as possible. And when you go shopping, avoid uh, GMOs whenever you can. All right. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Miner coming to you live from Cranston, Rhode Island. Just happened to be um, here and there was a show going on about food, and someone told me before the show that there was a company that's actually been working on taking DNA from animals and putting it into the food products so that they can somehow improve the food, I guess to make it healthier uh, for humans. And I find that to be a little bit disturbing, especially since uh, um, a couple years ago, something was brought to my attention, which I heard mentioned also here today, which was chemtrails. If you look up in the sky, you see these trails coming out of airplanes that don't seem to dissipate naturally like, like they're supposed to. 
And um, I started doing some research on that because they, they were saying how they're actually spraying stuff in the environment that's affecting not only the, the air that we breathe, but also the water that we drink and the soil that our plants come from. So it's affecting our entire environment. This, this is really bothersome to me because I have children and I have grandchildren who are going to grow up in this environment. Now, I started doing a little bit more research, and I found out that there's actually some new diseases that are coming out. And the CDC, which I believe is the Center for Disease Control, doesn't want to tell us about these new diseases. In fact, when I was doing the research, it was, it was difficult to get any information out of them, but there was a little bit of information there. But apparently there's this new disease, disease called Morgellons disease. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but you really ought to do some research. Morgellons, it's M-O-R-G-E-L-L-O-N-S. Look it up. This is a disease that uh, has only showed up probably in the past decade. And it's interesting that it kind of coincide with all this other stuff that's going on in the world and in our environment. This disease grows in your body. It grows under your skin. It's actually a fiber that grows. They, they said the fiber, when they actually analyze the fiber, it's a plastic that grows under your skin. It causes lesions and eventually causes debilitation to where a person just becomes so weak and so debilitated they can't work and they end up getting on, you know, uh, disability. Now, it's a very small amount of the population and it seems to be centered in a few certain locations around the country. And I was watching a TV show recently where they were talking about how um, there's these places where they're doing these different laboratory experiments with, with this genetic stuff where they're, and, and someone said it to me today, they're taking genes out of, out of animals that they think are good genes and they're putting it into plants so that the plants will grow these, these things that are supposed to be good for people. And then I hear about this Morgellons disease, which when they analyzed the actual disease, they found that it was part animal and part plant. And it's growing inside people's bodies. It's just like sick. It makes me sick to think about it. And the more I researched it, the more I found out that they just don't really want us to know about it. It's kind of hard to find any real conclusive evidence that it even exists. But there are people that have it. There are people that are being diagnosed with it. It's a very small portion of the population. Might be someone you know, but probably not. But if you're one of the type of people like myself who likes to do research, you know, you should go onto the Internet while you still have the opportunity, where there's still freedom of speech or freedom of press, and check out Morgellons disease might make you sick. I mean, some of the stuff that I saw there made my skin crawl because it actually literally grows under your skin. I started scratching and itching just, just reading about it. But, but just, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you sick. I'm just trying to make you realize that what they're doing out there, these chemical, these, these food manufacturers, the experiments that they're doing, we don't even know what the long-term effects are. It could actually end up being something that could cause an extermination of the human population. It makes me think of the swamp thing. What if we're all just like turning into swamp things and we don't even really know it yet? You know, like maybe my grandchildren are going to have babies that are going to be swamp things. I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but it's definitely something you need to be aware of. And do your do your own research. OK, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. This concludes this program broadcast. We the People, a freedom of speech television show. Go to www.wethepeopleofri.org.